March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month, and before the month ends, we want to talk about it. It's because it's something that one of our own has been going through, and joining me now is David Levine. Now, David works in our promotions department. We talk a lot of sports when you're walking around the newsroom. You and I do. You're a Denver native, and we talk about the good old days. But a few months ago, you were surprised to find out uh, through a screening that you had colorectal cancer, and it, it surprised you to no end. Well, and I was really lucky and, that I caught it in the first place because I went, uh, I was just turned 45, went to the doctor to see them about migraines and was not noticing anything else wrong with myself. They told me that I, um, congratulations, your birthday present is that the, the age has just been lowered to 45 to go get a screening. So I then went, I, I had a grandfather and, and his sister who had it. I found out later that it wasn't genetic. Um, but that's why I was, I was, I said, I need to go do this and make sure. Without that, you might not have gone for it if they hadn't, if you hadn't known it was I was family. not on my radar. Wow. I was very lucky to go into the doctor's office that day when I had just, if I had gone when I was 44, they may not have said it, but I went when I was 45. Um, and mine was advanced. It was stage 3B. Um, but you was, were otherwise healthy. You were not seeing or feeling anything that would trigger that. No, no. And my migraines have gone away. I don't know if that's a thing. <laughs> well, but uh, that's a good thing. but uh, no, I, I, there was nothing that was alerting me to the fact that I was sick. So, um, you, so you ended up, after this early detection, immediately going into the treatment. Yeah, I mean, I remember waking up from my, col from my um, colonoscopy and the doctor said, you have cancer, which is rare because it, it wasn't even like, are you sure you want to do a biopsy and right. make sure? He's, he was pretty, he was certain that I had cancer. So then I went into treatment, went to an oncologist and, and went through 12 rounds, which was uh, one treatment every two weeks of chemotherapy. And where are you now? I'm done. I finished in January, mid-January. Um, so we're now, I had a normal PET scan is what I was told. Um, I'll be going back in May and I'll be getting more frequent colonoscopies as we make sure that this is gone. But uh, yeah, it was a tough journey. It wasn't straightforward and easy. And there was very challenging times and tired moments, right? Um, but it wasn't uh, backbreaking, and I was able to work through it and, and be a father. And, and um, well, That's what I want to ask you, because yeah. with Princess Kate, we talked about telling kids. At some point, you had to tell the family that this was your, your future. Yeah, and it's got to be scary. I've got seven-year-old twin boys, so they, they, um, you can't talk to them like I would talk to you about it. Right. And so I had to tell them that there was something bad in Daddy's body that we needed to take out. And then when we um, got it out, that we were going to do treatments to make sure that it would stay, stay away. Well, we have with us, of course, our doctor, Dr. Powell Coley, joining us now to talk a little bit about colorectal cancer awareness. Let's talk about screening, because uh, I, I think David almost lucked into screening, didn't he? He did, and Tom, all too often we hear stories like David, because colorectal cancer is predicted to become the number one killer in people under the age of 50 in just a few years. And so we're seeing more and more of these Gen Z and millennials, for reasons that we don't completely understand, being diagnosed with colorectal cancer. In fact, you're two to four times as likely to get colorectal cancer if you're born after 1990 as compared to being born in 1950. So the fact that we've lowered the screening age to 45, which is a recent development, I think saved David's life here. Okay. And I really want to spread that message that, that many of us walking around living our lives feeling good, if we turn 45, we have to get into that doctor's office as soon as possible. Don't wait for a cue or a clue or a signal. If you're 45, even if you don't have the, the, the history that he had genetically, you should be tested? That's exactly right, and some even earlier. So if you've had a family history, you go down to 40 or 10 years before your family member actually got it. And some high-risk groups like African-Americans may also want to talk to their doctors because oftentimes, think about our colon. It's an organ that holds our stool, right? So it's a hollow organ. So if there's a tumor growing in there, it's not going to declare itself until it gets really big or starts to interfere with structures. And then you could have abdominal pain, bloating, change in bowel habits. You could have blood in your stool. But it takes it to get far along. And the difference between an early cancer and a far along cancer is literally life and death. Well, David, that's your story. I mean, you think of how close you were, the timing between when you found out and what might have been happening in your body even a month or so later was significant. It was really significant. I mean, it, it's, uh, it brings chills to my, um, to my arm and, and um, it, I, I couldn't have been more lucky to, to have it um, happen when it did and, and to be discovering it. The thing I'll say about what Dr. Coley was talking about is that I think in our society we get scared of colonoscopies for some reason. Sure. In my experience, it was a nap and you wake up and they ask you if you want juice, <laughs> right? Um, and, and it can be preventative, right? You can take out polyps that could turn into cancer. So it's really, it, there's no reason not to go. Well, and we talk about that, the aspect of business in healthcare. Is there a problem there as far as insurance? But 
anyone who has insurance at 45 is, is eligible. It's covered. In fact, even those without insurance, arguably because it's a preventive treatment, should have that option available to them. And it used to be an, an old man's disease. And yeah. now it's a young person's disease. And to your point, colonoscopies are not scary. They're easy. The hardest part is just that prep you have to do mm -hmm. the night before yep. where you have to clean out your colon, but then you get to eat whatever you want the next day after and, you wake up. As we just talked about, it's, it's not gender specific. Men, women, it's the same. It's not. And it, it can affect certain races more aggressively. So African Americans are more likely to get it. They're more likely to die from it. Um, but really, it's not gender specific. Men and women can get it. Now, there's certain habits that can increase your risk, eating more red meat, uh, drinking more alcohol, having obesity, having a sedentary lifestyle. These are all risk factors associated with an increased risk of cancer, which many of us, I think, nowadays do have those types of risk factors with processed food and such. But you get in there, you get it taken out, that could be potentially curable. And in David's case, they followed it with chemotherapy because because they wanted to make sure all the microscopic cells were really gone. Correct. Well, we always love visiting with you, but it's great to see you, especially knowing what you've been through over the past year, but it's nice to see you healthy and uh, get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, we're done with you. Back to promotions. Uh, you can get more with Dr. Coley, of course, at 9news.com slash Dr. Coley. Thanks.